Hi everyone, it's Tristan Puffy and today is Friday and guess what? I have two packages I need to open. I have them here and they are some new pins so I'm super excited to open them. Today I'll be making a video on my small business journey, how I started and how I marketed myself to make six figures when I was 19. Disclaimer, I am 20 now. I turned 20 in September. I feel very lucky to be in that position and while I talk to you guys about my small business journey, I will also be unboxing and grading some pins because that's what I do on my regular videos. So as you guys may know, I own a small business and I sell lots of cute stuff like many other small businesses. For example, I sell pins, I sell phone grips, I'll put some pictures of other things that I sell. My favorite things are definitely the maximum brushes, but I didn't start off making these types of products. If any of you followed me from two years ago, you would know that I first started off making polymer clay charms. So let me start off with how I started my polymer clay business and how it turned into the business it is today. In the very beginning, I was maybe 16, 17. I got a set of polymer clay for my uh, birthday present. And I was super happy. I was super excited about that because I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of people making different things out of polymer clay and I wanted to do that. So that's what I asked for for my birthday and that is what I got. If you guys heard of an artist called Creative Ratchi, her videos were one of my main sources of inspiration because she makes the cutest little charms and I started off following her tutorials and that's how my polymer clay journey began. And this was around my second year of high school. For the next two years, polymer clay was something that I exclusively did. As most social media accounts start off as, my polymer clay was my polymer clay account was very slow. I didn't really post uh, frequently until the next summer when I posted a post a day. And if it wasn't a post a day, it was every other day, I posted pretty frequently. And I posted mostly because I was constantly making charms every day. And you know, why not? I didn't really think much of it because this was just a hobby. I didn't expect it to turn into anything. Oh, these are so cute. Here, let me show you guys the pin. Um, I ordered like a thousand uh, strawberry cow charms, strawberry cow enamel pins for my Kickstarter and they all arrived just now. Look at how cute they are! And the back always two backing posts and puffy. Oh, uh, you can't really see it because it's covered. Yeah, I'm so happy about them. Strawberry cows? Okay, yeah, these boxes are all strawberry cows. So yeah, that is how my first two years of crafting began. And you know, I grew, a, I grew pretty slowly but consistently. And it was until I hit, I think, I think 10,000 followers. That's when things started growing faster. But it took two years for me to get to that point. So keep in mind that growing on social media is very difficult work. Um, and you need a lot of patience. So I'm glad I started early and that I started out of love for what I do because I definitely would not have posted every day of something that I hated. This is the second box of pins. So throughout my senior year of high school, I posted every other day on my Instagram and that was the only platform I started on. But I did start other platforms later on, which um, I will let you guys know about my experience with them. So during my senior year of high school, I posted every day. I hosted giveaways because I would be, uh, I would be growing consistently and hitting my milestones pretty fast. But even though I was growing a lot on Instagram, about 100 followers a day, I did not get a lot of sales. And one of the things a high school student does not know is how to market. I could market to get followers, but um, those followers were mainly younger kids who also wanted to craft and do what I do. So I was making about maybe $100 a month. It was not a lot and, and I definitely did not expect this to turn into a full-time thing. So after I graduated high school, I went on to college and I'm a computer science major right now. I'm actually graduating next semester, so that's exciting. But during my first year of college, I kind of stopped my account. I posted maybe once every four months and the growth was really slow. But I did get a few orders once in a while because I had an Etsy shop and Etsy and if you guys know, Etsy has its own little marketplace where people can find you just on Etsy. I think that was most of the marketing back then. So it was a really slow year. I uh, joined a dance club, so I didn't have much time to craft because I focused so hard on my studies and going to practice two or three times a week. So the first year of college was not much of growth. 
In fact, it slowed down. But towards the end of my school year, at that time, TikTok was starting to become bigger in America. Maybe it was already big, but I didn't. I was still considering if I should get a TikTok account. And during that time, TikTok was reaching out to creators on Instagram and other platforms to see if they would join their TikTok learn on TikTok program. It was like the creator fund and they offered you a few thousand dollars to post 30 videos a month. It was something like that and to me a few thousand dollars was a lot. So of course I would make all the videos in the world to get a few thousand dollars. Looking back I was definitely underpaid but considering that the reach TikTok gave me and uh, the low quality of my videos back then I would say it was 100% worth it. And considering that this was my side job but my main job being a student uh, this was my spending money, so I really appreciate the offer. And that is when I joined TikTok. So over the summer, I would post two TikToks a day. I would film in the morning, edit like around lunchtime, and that would be every single day. That's all I would do because over the summer, I didn't have anything else. So in the beginning, my TikToks didn't do very well. Um, there were a few that blew up, but as you guys know, for TikTok, if one video blows up, that does not ensure that any of your other videos will blow up. So it was just between like a hundred and a thousand views, a few like hundreds of thousands here and there, but usually the views were in the low hundreds or thousands. And during that time, I was having a little bit of family issues. My family has always been a problem, but this certain, uh, but this certain summer, they did kick me out of the house and I had to live with a friend for a few months. They did take me back in, but during my time there, I was like, oh, I need to like start making money soon because I might need to pay for my own college and my own living expenses. So TikTok was the only thing I had going for me back then. And so that is all I would be doing all day. I would be making TikToks, crafting, making orders, and watching personal finance YouTube videos. Specifically, Graham Stephan. I think I binge watched all his videos because I needed to focus on money. And during that summer, there was this TikTok trend going on. It was called Strawberry Cow, and it was this song someone made. And there were a lot of creators making strawberry cow products. So that is what I did with polymer clay. I used the sound and I made a strawberry cow polymer clay charm, and that video blew up. And I was getting orders every single day of strawberry cows and I was so happy because in my head that strawberry cow was going to pay for my college and pay for all my living expenses. Um, looking back now that was kind of dumb, college is very expensive, I would never pay that off. But I would be working non-stop. I had maybe 10 to 20 orders coming in every day and I would, and by the time I finished one batch of charms another batch would be ready to be made. Um, I took customs from other people and I made a whole series of strawberry animals because people would continue making songs about different animals using that same tune and there would be strawberry fox, strawberry dog, strawberry cat, strawberry penguin. Uh, those were the main ones I remember. And that summer I was 18 and when I got kicked out my friend brought me to the bank and I made my own bank account and my money was finally going to my own bank account rather than my parents. So I worked so hard over that summer to make all my charms and that experience of being kicked out and worrying about money, I know it wasn't a long time, it was just a few months. But as an 18 year old, um, just trying to start off her life, uh, that made me a very frugal person, so I would not spend on anything unless it was business related. And that brings me to my second year of college. So my second year of college, I, um, I was still riding that strawberry animal trend. The Learn on TikTok campaign only lasted for three months, but I got my compensation for that. I was so happy. And then um, I was on my own. But by that time, my TikTok account had grown to maybe 100,000, 200,000, it was a few hundred thousand and I was able to continue making polymer clay videos and getting sales off of those. And by the way, during that time, I would post Instagram posts every single day, so I did not neglect that. Oh, I also forgot this was also the COVID year. So COVID started, classes were all online and that gave me a ton of time to grow my business because I started making TikToks during the school year and that was very hard because I also had schoolwork, 
but that is what I did. I did it. I also did Instagram posts every single day. And second year of college, which was last year, so 2020 to 2021, that was the year where I was like, maybe this could be something. Maybe I don't have to go to college and work a full-time job on something that I was only mediocrely interested in. Is mediocrely even a word? Side note, let me show you guys uh, these two pins I have. So this is my February Patreon reward pin. It is a switch bunny. So cute. Okay, so I'm having a bit of a problem with this pin because a lot of them seem like dirty or something. I'll show you guys this one. But I need to contact the manufacturer about this because it's supposed to have two backing posts, but this one only has one. So this is the Orca Celestial Orca pin. Is that how you pronounce Celestial? I think I love all my pins. All grade beans after. Anyways, I was on my second year of college and that year I also did a lot of sponsorships with other companies promoting their stuff. For example, I did one with FlexiSpot, the standing desk. It was really cool. I still use it to this day because it is honestly useful. You guys should get yourself a standing desk. Another sponsorship I did was with a game. I think it was called Dragon Mania, but whatever it was, I made some money off the sponsorship, but mostly it was my shop. And that year, a lot of things happened. I switched from Etsy to my own website. And honestly, because I brought most of the sales, it was more worth it to make my own website because Etsy turns a lot of bees. That year, during Christmas, I made a video that blew up on TikTok and I just got a stream of orders. It was, I think I got over a hundred orders that day and I was like just mind blown. Like, that was my first five figure month and, and that's when I was like, for sure I can make this something by the end of my college. So that winter break, I was working non-slump, just making orders, staying up so late, maybe 4 to 5 a.m. every single day, just making orders, packing them. And during that time, I was getting even more orders on top of the ones I was currently making. I couldn't juggle all the orders. So it took me about six months after that blow up for me to finally catch up on my orders. It was such a struggle. I was like, this is the maximum amount of charms I could make in a day, a year, a month, and I cannot work any more than that. I realized that there was no way I could make money and have fun doing polymer clay unless I increased my prices. And during that time, I, re I was receiving quite some hate for my prices, but um, I know a lot of handmade artists get that on TikTok because the platform has quite some a lot quite a lot of kids who want to share their opinion even though it definitely isn't the right thing to do. Um what is this? <gasps> My manufacturer sent me a gift. Bro I didn't expect it. I, I thought it was just another different box of pins. I literally didn't open it so I could film. And I just, I was talking to her last night and I, I need to thank her, bro. She said, happy new year. But yeah, this is the pin manufacturer I usually use for all my pins. I kind of abandoned my other one because I didn't like their quality. In fact, the strawberry cow pins that I just showed you guys, I usually make my first manufacturer make them but I've completely switched this manufacturer just because the quality is a lot better. I don't think I'll ever make tea in my life. But it's so cute. It's a little jar. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna continue opening the pins and telling my story. Okay, so at that time, so second year of college, I hit my limit. That is the maximum amount of money I can make or close to the maximum money I can make with my time and I was staying up late too so that was not good for my health um, so I knew something had to change and I knew there was a lot of people on social media making enamel pins and just selling different types of products and um, that is when I started giving it a try and before that I did have a sticker shop it wasn't that big it was just like a side thing other than polymer clay my clay shop was definitely a lot bigger considering that stickers were only maybe two dollars a piece and I didn't really earn that much from them but I knew the next step after stickers was making enamel pins. 
and I knew that I didn't have to make them, I just had to design them, send them to a manufacturer, and I just get them and market them. So that is exactly what I started to do. I looked around for manufacturers, and I already had a lot of designs from my sticker shop. So I just made the stickers into pin designs, and I sent them off and made my first two designs of pins. These arrived the summer after my second year of college, which was last summer. And last summer was my transition from making clay charms to making pins and other type of design merchandise that I didn't have to make myself. And the transition was scary because for the first two months, I think it was May and June or June and July, I took off my clay products and only sold pins and I think some phone grips. And it was slow because there was no high priced products anymore. My pins were just $12 and my grips were $10. My income those months was zero because in addition to having my sales slow, I also had to pay for those pins. And this is why I say that when you start making pins and manufacturing items, you need to have money before. Um, luckily, I did clay, so I did have some money beforehand to put towards this. And honestly, a few hundred is enough. So my first two designs were Strawberry Cow and Mochi Bunny Pin. And I chose two separate manufacturers for them. And that's what I started marketing. I had to make posts announcing to everyone on Instagram and TikTok that I was switching. And although I did receive some negative feedback from it, I knew this is what I wanted to do for the future of Puppy. And I stuck to it. And the scary part was that because all my audience was for my clay products beforehand, and now I'm switching to completely different products, even though they were cute, they were not handmade. I was pretty scared that this shop, this new shop would not do well. So over the course of last summer, I marketed every single day two TikToks a day as usual, just like my clay. And I would say that most of my audience were supportive, but I knew I had to gain an entirely new audience for pins and the products that I was going to sell because they were not handmade anymore. So they didn't have that special handmade aspect. So in addition to the pins, I was in the background also making an Eda bag and that was my Fruit Cow Eda bag Kickstarter. Um, that did better than I expected considering that in my head, I was starting from zero. Um, I also started my Patreon over that summer. It didn't have many supporters in the beginning, but as I grew my pin audience, I am at around 100 patrons right now and I'm so grateful to you guys because it was scary making that transition and you guys made me more confident in what I'm doing. And every month I would make a pin for my patrons and I would also sell that on my main shop because I didn't have enough funds to make different pins for each because I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where to start, how much pin designs I should do, what products I should make. And because my strawberry cow clay charms were such an important part of my clay journey, my clay business, I wanted to make a strawberry cow eater bag. And that is exactly what I did. Um, my Kickstarter definitely funded a lot of my products, a lot of my future products. It made me so much more confident in what I'm doing right now. And I know for sure designing products is what I'll be doing for quite some time now. So if you're wondering when I finally made $100,000, it is the summer before 2021 when I was getting tons of clay orders. And please keep in mind that is not 100k I kept, it is the amount I made, but that excludes all the fees, all the shipping labels, all the materials I had to buy for my business. So at that time I did not have six figures but I had made six figures. Switching from clay to manufacturing products was an amazing decision and I knew it was the right one. And I'm so happy for your support on my Kickstarter, on my Macabun pre-orders. All that combined just made me confident in my abilities to run a solid business. By the way, here is a pin for February Patreon. And this is Frog Bun, the Frog Bun pin. This is another frog bun pin. Um, considering the amount of frog bun stuff, you would think that I would uh, be having a Patreon month with frog bun, but um, I'm not confirming that. And that marks the end of my small business journey. Right now, I've just finished a second round of Macabun pre-orders. It's the plush you guys have seen on my Instagram and TikTok. The cow bag Kickstarter, the bags are currently in production. More Macabuns are in production. Um, I'm, I have a lot of products 
coming and I'm so excited to make them. I'm currently in the process of manufacturing AirPod cases. So you might ask, Joyce, what would you do if you had to start your entire business over? For the most part, I think considering my age, I did a pretty good job of running my business and learning from my mistakes. One thing I would make sure to learn is how to market your products. In the beginning, I did mostly polymer and clay tutorials, which means that I did not market my products well. I just told people how to make my products, which might be the opposite of marketing. As I became an adult and now that I'm 20, I learned that it's important to make sure that you want them to buy your product, not make it themselves. That was something I learned the hard way, the long way, and it took me years to figure out how to market my products. Um, another one is to start a TikTok, and that's because content creation is moving towards making videos which means that people who used to just post pictures on Instagram need to start learning how to make videos. And even though they will start off ugly at first, mine were very ugly. You will learn the best ways to make your lighting nice, to make your products look nice, and to make engaging content. And honestly, right now, some of my content is still not engaging and I'm still learning. And lastly, one of the most important things to grow is to post. No one's going to see your content if you don't post and I know some people do not have the time to make one video a day, two videos a day, a post a day. It's a lot of work, I understand. So if you cannot do that, please focus on the quality of the work, make it engaging. I personally believe that if you work hard, you can do anything, even if it takes a long time. So be consistent and take your risks and do what you love. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. I hope you enjoyed this story and all the pins that I unboxed today. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye-bye.